Hi, I'm Tom Jones, and welcome to another free art lesson. I've got a little uh, lesson plan that I've planned for you today, and this particular lesson plan I hope you'll find interesting. The word interesting is uh, sort of uh, synonymous with this particular scene because I've said many times if you're going to paint a fence, or in this case a picket fence, why not paint an interesting picket fence rather than the perfect picket fence? So what I'm going to suggest to you is that in this case I've got a picket fence where I've got a couple normal pickets, but there's a couple missing in here. And over here there's one that's crooked. So let me go ahead and get into the painting demonstration for you here and I'll show you exactly what I mean about making this an interesting picket fence. I'm going to start by putting in some color. I've got some color in my spray bottles and what I do is I fill the spray bottle about three quarters of the way uh, with water then I squeeze the paint out of a tube, much like toothpaste, about an inch long, into the spray bottle, and then I shake it up vigorously. Now, don't shake it up with the lid on. Shake it up using a paper towel or a tissue on top. Then what I'd like to see you do is put the lid back on, then prime it, and you're ready to go. Let me show you how it works. This particular spray bottle shoots dots rather than a mist. I would not use a mist bottle because it won't work. You have to use these dot bottles. You can buy them in the art stores and I would buy a couple dozen of them if I were you. But look how interesting the color goes on. See that? So I can put those dots on. I'll pick up another color. This is a, sort of like a, a bright red. So we'll pick up a little bit of that and we'll have the illusion that there's some floral area going on here in this particular area of the picket fence right in front of it. This will dry. I'll dry it with a hair dryer and then we'll continue by continuing to uh, paint some dark colors behind the picket fence so that you can see the picket fence. Let me just continue on here for a moment and then we'll, then we'll take a moment and then we'll dry this for you. I'll also take some of my green. This is a light green and what I'm going to do is put a little green in there just for a look of floral in a couple of areas. Now this is not going to be fancy. In the real world uh, I would probably take and spend a little more time on the flowers or the floral area here and uh, but it's not about the flowers in this case it's really about the picket fence and that's what I want to show I'm just really showing a little bit of color here so it anchors this particular scene I'm gonna set the spray bottles aside and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come back in I'm gonna dry this with my hair dryer and then I'm gonna put some darks behind the picket fence this white picket fence and you'll see exactly how the whole thing works Now it's completely dry and I'm going to take and mix up some dark colors and I'm going to paint around the edges of the picket fence. Watch what happens now. I'm going to use a variety of dark colors to make it more interesting. I'm going to start out with some of my uh, Prussian blue which is a very deep dark blue. Then I'm going to go ahead and put in some uh, hooker green deep in this case which is a very dark green. And we'll start with that color initially but watch what I do. I come up to the edge of where the fence is and make a nice, crisp, sharp edge along that fence. Now I'm going to take another brush, a three-quarter inch brush here, and we'll switch colors. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, quinacridone rose and a little bit of my uh, per or Prussian uh, blue, and I'll come in and change colors a little bit. So I got a little different color working here now. I'll stop, come back, clean out my brush. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit of my uh, ultramarine blue deep in this case and just put down an interesting area of blue in a part of it and then I'll just pull this color away as if it were part of a floral area back there I'll come get some hooker green deep fill up both sides of my brush come in and continue on I'll paint maybe part of it using a little bit of a hooker green deep now let me suggest this to you try to avoid painting areas of green, areas of red, areas of blue. What we're looking for, quite frankly, is we're looking for something more interesting than that. I want the colors to overlap. So what I'm saying to you is that these colors are all there, but they're seamless. You're not going to see the particular colors stop and start. I'm going to take my round brush. I want to paint down between this particular picket right here. So watch what I do now. I bring, just come down in between, keep a nice sharp edge on the picket. Same thing down here. Just continue on right down to the top of where the floral is. 
Now, let me come back over. I'll pick up a little bit of my um, Prussian blue again, maybe a little green with it. We'll come in and paint right underneath this board that's on the picket fence here that the pickets are fastened to or nailed to. And I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to pull that color toward me and it'll create the illusion of the tops of this particular area of floral. Watch what happens. Just a few hairs are coming away from the edge of this brush. I'm using a, what we call a blend. It's a 50% squirrel and 50% a new synthetic. And what happens is some of the hairs will pull away from the body of the brush. When I do that, it creates this little lacy look that I have here. Let's go back and take a look at um, uh, some more color, putting some more color around. I'll pick up a little more rose and we'll throw a little of that rose in. Come down this side of the picket, like so, and continue on. Go over and change color again. I'm trying to change color about every inch and a half to two inches. The reason for that is I want to have an interesting dark area. Watch what I do now. I'll just throw in a little bit of cerulean blue in there into that mix to help make it more interesting. We'll come over and we'll pick up a little bit of our uh, Hooker Green Deep and we'll use a little bit of that hooker green deep with uh, a little bit of ultramarine blue deep and we'll have another color change going on. Try to change color like I say every inch and a half to two inches and you'll have an interesting fence. Again come back down I've got an area here that I want to take care of so let me do that in a moment I've got the rose color I'll add a little rose color back into the mix and again pull the color away to make it more interesting as if it was a floral area back here. Let me come back in. We'll pick up some of that cerulean blue again and just have a little fun with that. We'll throw some of that into the mix. That's always interesting. We'll come back down in here. Let's go ahead and finish this area out. Paint it. Both sides of the brush, mix it up thoroughly. Come in and paint this dark area underneath this board. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm basically painting this area right here and I'm going to just take my round brush and I'm going to pull some of this color down. Again, to get the same effect that I got over here, I can do it also with my one half inch flat brush. So we'll do it that way as well. And that will create this little nice rugged edge so it looks like floral there, okay? Now I'll get back to my, uh, let's say, a little bit of the Hooker Green Deep. And we'll put a little bit of Hooker Green Deep in. You'll notice that I'm changing color often. Now I would suggest to you that even though you have color in your brush and you haven't used it all, that's okay. Just go ahead and clean it out anyway and continue on with the, with the uh, color, making that color change. If you don't do that, then it gets pretty monotonous. You don't want all that dark to be just one color. You want a variety of color in there. So that's a good way of doing it. Let me take a little bit more of this uh, cerulean and put a little more of the cerulean in a couple of areas to add a little more interest. We can do that. All right, let's come back over. We'll pick up some Prussian blue, get back into the really deep, dark Prussian blue color again. What I'll do is Come right along the top of this board and fill that area in. Now this gets a little monotonous painting around all these little boards, but quite frankly, it's worth it. If you take your time and do it, it's worth it. Now, as an artist, you could imagine, you can imagine all kinds of different ways of handling this picket fence with regard to how you want to do floral on it or flowers on it or however you want to do it. But the point being, it's the shape of the picket fence that makes the big difference. In other words, it's not just a perfect picket fence, it's an interesting picket fence. It's sort of like the little red-headed boy with the freckles and two of his front teeth missing. How can you not love that kid, okay? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the imperfection, one of these fences that has some character. Now you can really see the fence. Now we still have a little ways to go. We're gonna put some shadows in here and so forth. We'll make it more interesting than just, just the white fence. So. Just stay with me on this now. We're going to have some fun with this. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to take some of my Hooker Green Deep and paint across that way. Again, I'll stop, clean out my brush, come back, get some of my dark blue. 
and just pull some of the color away. This doesn't have to be fancy up here. We're not going to do anything special up in that area right now. We'll come back over here, paint underneath on this side of the picket fence. Again, stop, come back, get some ultramarine blue deep this time. Have a little area that's an ultramarine blue rather than a Prussian blue. Come back, pick up uh, maybe a little cerulean blue, put a little touch of that there. Come back, get a little Prussian blue. People always ask me if I use a lot of paint when I'm painting this way, and the answer is yes, but I get the results that I want. That's the main thing. So we've got that floral now. All right, let me take and clean up one edge here on this particular fence area right here. I want it nice and clean. I want these areas clean, like so. All right, now I'm going to dry this again, and I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to put some shadows on the fence and maybe a little bit more greenery in here and you can see exactly how this will turn out. Now the painting is dry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and put some shadows in here for you. So I'm going to take my round brush. I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, Let's use a little bit of a cobalt blue here. And what we'll do is we'll put a little shadow side to this picket fence so you can see exactly what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to keep it fairly light. I don't want a dark value there, so it's going to be fairly light. We're going to paint the shadow side of this particular fence. If it's a little too dark, always use the tissue to pick up any excess. Now, <clears throat> if there's a shadow on this side of that picket fence, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow in between as well because there'll be a cast shadow there. So let's take, do the same thing on this side. This, is, this By adding the shadow, it gives a little dimension to it rather than uh, just being uh, uh, one-dimensional. Same thing here. If we're going to have a, a shadow on the side there, then there has to be a shadow over here as well. Let me pull some of that color out and just kind of soften that edge just a little bit. To make the shadow interesting, don't make a perfect shadow parallel to the picket because then that's pretty boring. Shadow on this side as well. Same thing here, a little shadow in between these two, these two pickets here. Then we'll come back down and do the shadow on this one. I'll dry this one more time after I do this because I have another special shadow that I want to do for you. So we'll pull this shadow down like so. So now you can see the shadow side of this, of this particular picket area. Another little shadow area here. Another little shadow area here on this side. So now you can see how it's starting to, to, to uh, fall into place. I'm going to do a little greenery here. Then I'm going to dry this, and then I'm going to put in put shadows on the pickets themselves. So let me take a little bit of the. Uh, dark green and dark blue, and we'll put in just a little bit of a grass area here just to give you a little dimension to this area. All I'm doing is dragging, let me make sure you can see this now, I'm going to pull this up, you may have missed part of that. I'm going to just drag this brush up like so. What I'm doing is I'm pushing and lifting, pushing and lifting, and it's creating the look of grass. Again, the hairs are coming away from the side of that brush, and I'm getting that look of, of grass there. And I'll take my rigger brush, my liner brush, and come up and put just a few of those grasses in the scene. Not too many, just a few. If you put it everywhere, then it gets to look a little hokey. So I've got that done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry the entire painting, and I'm going to come in and put some shadows across the face of this particular picket fence and then that'll be the, the finished product for you and you can see how nicely and how easily it is to do an interesting picket fence. Now, it's dry. Let me just bend this down a little bit so you can see it. And I'm going to put it back in place for you and then what we're going to do is I'm going to take my one inch flat brush and I'm going to come in and I'm going to paint for you a little bit of a shadow effect across the front of this picket fence. Now keep the shadow fairly light. And 
and make the shadow an interesting shadow. And don't put the shadow everywhere, just across parts of it. Like so. And that concludes this particular lesson plan. See how easy that was to create an interesting picket fence? I hope you enjoyed this particular lesson plan, and I hope you'll try this on your own. Thanks a lot. I'm Tom Jones.